brethren, if you search yourself, God will not judge you. If you have been destined for salvation, you have to suffer at any time you plunge yourself into evil doing. Once you have refrained from all these things and you become an elect of God, but you plunge yourself into these things, committing fornication and going about doing all sorts of things, then you would receive such punishment that you would not be able to realize yourself. You would compare yourself with other fornicators and say, look at others who are fornicating about. Why is it that I am suffering so much? The answer is that those people are destined for destruction and you are destined for salvation. Do you not know that when you have refrained from fornication, from stealing, and from getting easily exasperated or indulging in any type of evil thing, and after some time you go back to these things, you have to receive punishment? If we have searched ourselves properly, God would not have judged us. All those things that you had refrained from or denied yourself of, if you go back into those things, you must actually receive punishment. All those things that are enumerated in the first step to God, that you should not do them. If you indulge in them, you would suffer for it. If you do not receive punishment when you do when you go to fornicate or when you sue someone in the law court or when you tell lies or commit any of the vices know that you are not a child of God if you did not love the people no one should have been saved in the entire universe of all the words of God that are preached to you day and night, you still go to the world and keep company with the people of the world and their evil communication corrupt you. You converse with them and associate with them and then they lead you astray. I want to show you that things are similar to those things which after you have forsaken those things, you go back and indulge in them. You do not know that when you were indulging in these things, each of these things have their own apartment inside your body. Drinks have an apartment, fornication has an apartment, and so on. When you indulge yourself in any of these things, you have no trouble. The evil spirits living in these apartments would be very much alive to their needs and would ask you of these things if you are not ready to do them. The evil spirits would always remind you to go and do them. That is the reason if a fornicator does not fornicate, it appears as if he would die. So also is the drunkard and the spirit of drinking. You are sanctified with the words of God, brethren. You should realize that when the priesthood is changed, the laws are changed. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of Satan is destroyed. And so the apartments for drinking the apartments for snuffing and fornicating and telling lies and stealing will be destroyed and you will be kept sanctified unto the glory of God. The various apartments in you which contain the spirit of fornication, of drunkenness and other vices has now born the spirit of love, the spirit of kindness and the spirit of all virtues of love. Therefore, 
any day you attempt to drink, you will be in trouble with yourself because that spirit which urges you to fornicate is no more there. The spirit of drunkenness is no more there, which means that those apartments have been destroyed in you. Therefore, if you go to indulge in any of these things, you become sick. When any of these things get into your body, it cannot find any apartment. It would move around the body, and but you would not find a place of shelter. Then you would complain that something is moving around your body from head to toe and you would lose your senses and would not be yourself again. It is said that the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. You should therefore not take any injection nor any drug. You should not go to consult any oracle or necromancer for concoction because there is no apartment again in your body for these things to dwell because your entire body is occupied by Jehovah God and his Christ and they have taken dominion over your body. Anytime you fornicate, tell lies, drink and indulge in any of these vices, listen attentively to yourself and see what would be the reaction of your body. Once you do these things, you have no pleasure in life at all. Anytime you tell lies, you have no peace in you because there is no place for those things in your life. Anytime you do not pray, you will have no peace of mind. Anytime you will not preach or testify about the glory of God, you do not have peace of mind because all these things are weapons of war. How to have peace? Brethren, when you do what is good, you have peace. When you tell the truth, you have peace. When you preach, pray and testify, you have peace. Because these things are made to give you peace. That is why people say that there is something in you. And it is true that there is something in you which you have not felt. It is Jehovah God who dwells in you. It is our Lord Jesus Christ who dwells in you. It is the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. And therefore you have to dwell in the illumination of God. There is no darkness whatsoever. And that is exactly what they see in you and claim that there is something in you. Do you think you can indulge in those things that you had been doing. In fact, there is no chance again for you. Jehovah God and His Christ have taken possession of you and there is no opportunity for any of the things which you have been doing in the past. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 32. But when we are judged, we are, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Brethren, have you heard that? There is no evil thing that you do which will yield good fruits. Everything will become useless. If it had been clear to you there is, that there is no member a brotherhood who would have consulted an oracle, a necromancer, or a native doctor, rather than give your money to such people, carry your money and throw it into the deep sea because it would be utterly useless. There is no person in the entire world who is capable of killing a brotherhood of the cross and star member. If a person boasts 
or claims that he would harm you somehow, tell him that there is no person who has the power to harm you. If you had been, if you had known yourself what you stand for and what you are in this world, you would have been very happy and you would have prepared yourself to stand by the work of God. Right now, many of you are contemplating to go to the hospital for a medical checkup in the hospital to go and know your blood pressure. When you realize that you are falling away from the path of God, instead of you to retreat, repent, and confess your sins and come back to God, you would think that you have trouble and need to go to the hospital for medical checkups or for, for blood and urine tests, etc., and to inject certain substance into your system, you are adding pains to injury. You suffer because of your sins. Brethren, if you commit fornication and as such, and as soon as you commit fornication, punishment comes to you immediately. Instead of you to confess your sins and refrain from fornication, you go surreptitiously to a native doctor to prepare certain things for you, or you go to a medical doctor to test certain things in you so that you might get well. It does not avail you anything. Do you know that your suffering and your punishment comes from all these things? For you, being a brotherhood member, to tell lies, you have to receive a befitting punishment whether or not you fast and pray or go and ministry work. As soon as you tell lies, you have to receive punishment. If you steal, you have to be punished. If you steal five naira and put it into one thousand naira, everything would be removed from there and your account would remain empty. On top of that, you would become very wretched and could even go naked. If you are an employee and you obtain bribe before you do something for someone, you are face to face with trouble. There is no way of escaping. You have to receive punishment. If you like, from today, experiment with the words of God that you have received. You will have peace of mind and you will have rest of mind. There will be no trouble for you and no evil will come to you will come your way when david did what was evil in the sight of god god had to give him punishment if you steal and do not suffer for it it means that you are not a child of god if you take something from someone under false pretenses or if you take something from someone in an extortionate way and you have not received punishment for what you have done, you should cry and wail and weep because you are not a child of God. If you are intimate with someone, wife or husband, and you do not suffer for it, you should cry and wail for you are not a child of God. If you are destined for this kingdom and you put your hands into any evil you will have to receive punishment and when you see things happening in that way with you you have to refrain from it and repent and confess your sins and you will be restored to your normal condition all the words preached to you are being inscribed in you and they have become your blood because they have been codified in you, the first step to God has also been inscribed in you, and they are the embodiment of God in you. 
when God judges, He does not want us to perish. He wants us to escape from the punishment we are receiving. He also wants us to continue in His work and to serve Him. The way to God has the way God has chosen to chasten you is what man can not comprehend. All the good things we possess are given to us by God. When He wants to chasten you, He will remove the good things from you and will give what is bad to you. Sometimes you see someone coming from a far distance to tell you that the Father has sent him or her to you. He will force you to believe in the lies he has told you so that you might deceive, so that you might, so that he might deceive you. You have been told not to commit adultery. So when you commit adultery, he would send somebody from a far distance to come and deceive you. Sometimes he would send someone to come and deceive you and would go away with your daughter or your son. There are various ways which God uses to do his own work. The various things that we see are the result of those things which we put ourselves in but which God wants you to refrain from them. When David saw the beautiful lady and gave an order that the husband should be put in the war front to be killed, and when that assignment was carried out successfully, he also successfully took the woman to be his wife. God sent the prophet of God to him to tell him the type of punishment which he would suffer. David suffered all the punishment. Not one of them was left. Imagine the series of punishment which would come from only one act of sin committed. The child delivered by the lady did not live. He died. Because of this one act of sin, two of David's sons own children died. It was because of this one act of sin that Absalom took away his brother who was intimate with his sister to somewhere and killed him. These punishments were not hidden from him. They were stated before him clearly. David was disgraced and put to shame. Brethren, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. It is not God, it is not good for any person loved by God to go and involve himself in any bad thing. It is said that it is because of your action that people blaspheme against the name of God. Stop going for a medical checkup. Stop going to necromancer. Stop going to native doctor to prepare charms and, co and concoctions for you as soon as you realize that you have troubles and difficulties. Check yourself thoroughly. If you were a fornicator, refrain from it completely. If you have been taking bribes, deny bribery and refrain from it completely. If you have been telling lies or stealing or indulging in any of the vices, refrain from all these things and God will receive you back. When you see pestilence in the world, numerous types of epidemics, we should refrain from sin and submit ourselves to prayer and fasting. If your children are stubborn, disobedient, recalcitrant, do not beat them up. Do not punish them for anything. Check yourself and confess your sins to God and God will change them. Then you are completely changed from 
your sinful ways. To some of us, our business are collapsing. Some of us cannot have money and all our businesses are becoming useless because we indulge in so much in fornication. We commit adultery and we do not want to refrain from those things. And because of these things, we become wretched and poor. Sometimes we suffer from incurable diseases which medical or native doctors cannot cure and prayer would not take it away because you have indulged yourself in fornication. You tell lies, steal and do all sorts of sinful acts. Therefore, this sickness continues in you. Confess your sins, brethren. It is only God who can help you with the proviso that you confess your sins and become truly repentant and treat yourself and go back to him and he would receive you as his own child. God loves everybody in the world. That is why we suffer so much because he does not want us to perish. Read this golden text again. Golden text, Matthew chapter 12. Verses 44 to 45. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he will find it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Brethren, have you seen what God used in punishing man? That is why you are advised that whenever you are intimate with your wife or your husband, soon after that act, you should give yourself up to prayer so that Satan would not come back unto you to throw you back into incontinence. Brethren, God does not like to see us suffer, but when you go and indulge yourself in any of these vices, then the evil spirit comes into you and you suffer. When you leave doing what is good and start to practice evil, at that moment you receive punishment. Having known that the spirit of fornication is an evil spirit, when you are intimate with a woman and thereby fornicate or indulge yourself in concoction, then you cannot escape punishment. All spirits connected with money, smoking and backbiting are evil spirits. When you find yourself doing all these things, then your last state will be worse than the first. If you reject the truth, God would send you delusion. Brethren, the scriptures have told us that since they have refused to collect the wisdom of truth to themselves, that is why God sent to them a great delusion so that they believe what is untruth and become destroyed. You have been instructed not to commit fornication or adultery, nor to steal, nor to hate any person, not to indulge in concoctions, in charms, in sorcery, not to consult oracles and necromancers, but at any time you engage yourself in any of these things, there would be no way of escape for you. No one servant can serve two masters. It is either he who love one and hate the other, or serve one sincerely and leave the other one to suffer. If you do not tell the truth, you must tell lies. 
If you do not love someone, you must hate him. If you are satisfied with your position, you will look for a reward. If you do not do what is good, then evil is your part. You will always indulge in evil things. Remember that king who wanted to wage war with another king? And so the prophet of God said to him that he should not undertake that war because it would not be good. The king answered that that man had never told anything good about me. The evil spirit saw what he was doing and so this evil spirit asked God to send him to this man so as to deceive him and God agreed and the evil spirit went and deceived him. What actually brought that suffering unto him? It was because he had rejected the wisdom of truth and that was why God left him in delusion so that he might be deceived. If we had stood firmly to this truth, we would not have had any trouble at all if King Saul had stood firm in truth. God would not have sent evil spirit unto him. God does not use cane or stick to punish you. And since he is the sole spiritual head, he is in control of all the spirits. He has the power to send to you any of the spirits. And so, whenever you commit any offense against him, he will send punishment unto you. If he details you to do anything and you refuse to do it, he will send to you the spirit of anger and you will, be, you will become so exasperated that you can break anything in the house or even break down the house. When he tells you not to commit fornication and you commit it, he will send into you the spirit of anger and, ab and abomination and you would beat your wife and drive her away and say that you do not want to see her and that she should go to her father's house. All the spirits are the agents of God. Death is an agent of God. AIDS is an agent of God. All the things that you see on earth are agents of God. Do not ever say woe unto death because it is doing its work and God created all these agents and they are doing their work. They are keeping their position and not one of them has done anything wrong because they are moving according to the directives of God. In Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, people are told not to fornicate, not to drink, not steal. But when you drink beer, commit fornication, steal, and tell lies, it would drive the evil spirit into you. You will then begin to say that brotherhood is concoction. It is witchcraft. And you would not see any good thing in brotherhood again. Are you not surprised that here in the kingdom of God, someone would stand up and say that people here are filled with hatred, with malice, and wishes? Are you not surprised to see that type of person uttering such words inside air? Therefore, if you refuse to serve God, you have to serve Satan. The result would be that your last state would be worse than the first. Therefore, brethren, we should try to do what is good. We should say what is good so that we might not create a chance for the evil spirit to come back to us. Do you remember the story in which the evil spirit was tormenting someone? 
And when Christ approached, it said, Thou Son of God, do not trouble me because it is not yet my time. That this is to show you that all the evil spirits which you find in the world know and can identify the children of God. Whenever you are serving God, they would know. And whenever you give yourself up to something else, they also know. We do not know those who are doing good, but they know. The evil spirits know those who are doing good and those who are doing bad. Sometimes, when you see those people with high spirits, the insane fellows, you say that they are mad fellows. They have these spirits and these spirits know what is good and what is bad. Remember that Jew who went about and when he met someone with the spirit of divination and said, I conjure you in the name of Jesus. And the spirit said unto him, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? It went away and gathered seven other devilish spirits and began to tear that person. In the world, people complain that so many things, worldly concoction, witchcraft, and the rest of them, but here everything is subdued. Nothing can wear its ugly head in here. The power to drive away the devil. Brethren, you have heard that so many churches go to ask Nicomancers to pack away concoctions and throw them away. But in the end, they would die. You would know that if Satan drives away Satan, then it is fighting against itself. Where lies its own kingdom? It is only the Holy Spirit of God that you use in driving away the devilish spirit. Some people say that the evil spirit is worrying them. And I say, how can the evil spirit worry a member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? When you have been given the power to drive evil spirits away, that is your major duty, a major assignment. When you drive away the evil spirit, you have the spirit of God and you have the glory of God. What is happening in the world is that when the evil spirit goes out at first, it will go back to spy and see whether that house is vacant or is occupied by any other person. If it finds it empty, it will go back and bring seven more devilish spirits to occupy the house. When you come in here and the devilish spirit is driven away, but you turn back and say that you belong to apostolic church or Kwaibo or the church of your father, you do not realize that when the evil spirit was driven out from you, you were sanctified and now you are going to stay idle. That evil spirit would come back and gather seven other spirits and they would attack you and you would observe that your present state would be worse than the first. You are deceived when you are told that all churches are one because they are using the same Bible. The question is, is what they are saying true? Are all the churches the same? Brethren, we have, to, we have the cause to be joyous and happy. There is no other way outside in the world apart from this way to salvation. The distance from here to the world is very far. If you want to go back to the world, it would take you a long time to drive backwards. 
Conversely, before you come to this kingdom from the world, it took you a long time because it is a very long distance. That is why when some of you say that there is no need to stay here, you want to go away? I ask whether you would know the way back. You are in heaven and all of you are with God. Therefore, the world is not a place for you and you cannot fit into the world. The goats have been separated from the sheep. Brethren, it is not my intention to take you further. One stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.